Welcome to the training video on status display. In this video, we will cover how to build and save status display configurations in SDS2's version 7.3. This video was recorded in Erector Station. Therefore, the menus may vary slightly, but the demonstration will apply to all stations. Status Display allows the user to create simple to complex settings that can either color or mask, which is hide, items in the model. By using Status Display, you can filter out items by the set criteria, which will allow the user to select items from the model for use in procedures such as reports or exports. Status Display can be launched from several locations, from the Model drop-down menu, an icon, shortcut key, and in BIM Fabricator, Erector, and Approval Stations from the right-click menu. New to 7.3, a previously created status display configuration can also be launched from the Quick Launch icon. Let's begin by briefly describing the functions of the sections in the status display. The Priority section. Each priority level can contain one or more conditions. The New button creates a new priority level. The Disable checkbox allows the user to disable the conditions that are associated with the currently displayed priority level. The Condition section. Here is where you will determine how each condition is to be represented in the model. By using the New or Delete Condition button, conditions can be added or removed from the priority level. The Modify Condition section is where you can select and modify the conditions to be used in the currently displayed priority level. We can see that there are many available conditions. I would like to focus on some new 7.3 conditions in the Shipping and Erection status. We have Member Lift Assignment, Assign Members Liftable, and Assign Members Critical. In the Member Status Member Type, we have added in the Custom Member. In Bolt Status, we've added in Type, Material, and Diameter. In the Search Options, we have the Frame to Model Complete Member. And then, of course, we have the remaining ones that were available in version 7.2. Let's move on to how these sections function. Currently, the default status display is set to have one priority with a condition of existing member shown in the model as masked or hidden when any of the below conditions are true, that is, that the item is an existing member. Let's modify the show item as to a cyan color. We can see the concrete wall is an existing member. Now, I will set the show item as back to masked. It is a good practice to have your status display with the highest priority, that is, priority 1, set to mask existing members. This will hide any concrete walls or dummy members that the detailer used to generate connections or any boneyards of members or any imported reference models. Not every detailer will set these members to existing. Some will create zones or sequences to set these previously mentioned items in you will need to communicate with the detailer on their procedure. As stated earlier, we have one priority level containing a masked existing member condition. I will create a new priority level. We can see that we are currently working in priority 2. We will cover more about priority levels further on in the demonstration. In the Modify condition, General Status Options. I will select Sequence, leaving the Is expression and the From Range of Sequence 1 to Sequence 1. Then hit the Apply button. The result will be all the members that are in Sequence 1 will be hidden. Using the little yellow filing cabinet icon on the right of the Modify Condition line, I will remove the highlighted Sequence 1 and drag the mouse from Sequence 2 to 5 selecting them, and then OK to close the screen. We now see the ranges from Sequence 2 to 5. I will select the Apply to see the results. The result will be only Sequence 1 will be displayed in the model. I will set it back to Sequence 1 to 1 again, and then change the Is expression to Is Not by selecting the Is button. Select the Apply button, 
The result will be the same as the previous operation where only sequence 1 is displayed in the model. After selecting the OK button, I am prompted to name and locate where I am to save this current status configuration. If the configuration was not changed, you would not be prompted. Instead of saving the configuration, I will cancel the window. You will notice that the status display configuration remains active, masking every sequence but sequence 1 and the existing members. These status display settings will remain active until you either change or cancel the status display or you exit the modeling window. When I run the status display again and do not make any changes, then select the OK, we can see that I am not prompted to save. To remove this prompting, I will remove the check in the User Options, Configuration tab, from the Prompt to Save configuration after changes. You will also notice that you can select and set the default status display configuration used for the first launch of the status display in the modeling window. Now when I open the status display, as mentioned earlier, the status display I was working on remains loaded in the configuration screen. But remember, the configuration has not yet been saved. If I were to exit my modeling window, the status display configuration would go back to the default and my work would be gone. Since I turned off the option to prompt, it is now up to me to save what I have done. Let's select the Save As. I would like to point out the Design Data folder in the SDS2 7.3 Comp Status folder. This folder is a backup containing all the default statuses that are installed with SDS2. It is important not to save any configurations in this folder because this folder is completely overwritten with each install of SDS2. I will locate my job folder and create a subfolder within the job called Project Status Config. Then save the configuration folder in the folder calling it James. This way when I send the project out to another discipline the status configuration will be included in the job. On the bottom near the middle of your screen you will notice a checkbox icon that states Status Display. When I remove the check, the currently loaded Status Display configuration will be turned off. When checked, the current Status Display will be turned on. This can also be tied to a shortcut key. To the right of that icon, you will see an icon displaying the currently loaded Status Configuration with the path and an SDS2 yellow Browse button next to it. Using the Browse button, I can load any configuration without having to open the Status Display Configuration screen. I will load the default configuration, and then I will reload the James configuration back. Back to the Status Display screen functionality. The buttons in the bottom will perform the following actions. Cancel will turn off the status display. Load will load the selected configuration as we've already covered. Clear will clear all the priority levels and conditions in the currently loaded status display setting it back to the default. Reset will restore the currently loaded status display configuration. This concludes part one of the status display video. Please proceed to part two.